Metroid Fusion is a game I missed out on when it released for the Game Boy Advance in 2002 alongside Metroid Prime. It actually wouldn't be until the game was given out via the Nintendo 3DS Ambassador program that I'd play it for myself. For those who may not be aware, the Nintendo 3DS Ambassador program was basically a consolation for those who bought the system at launch for the original MSRP of $249.99. Since the 3DS's pitiful sales warranted a price drop to $170 not even six months after its release. The Ambassador program gave those who were eligible exclusive access to 10 NES games and 10 Game Boy Advance games of Nintendo's choosing, and it was a solid lineup, on the GBA side at least, and among those GBA titles was none other than Metroid Fusion. The conversation surrounding Metroid Fusion has seemingly changed quite a bit over the years, as I remember, even around the time of the Ambassador release of the game, Fusion was seen as one of, if not the weakest entry in the franchise. I'm unsure if this changed due to the average quality of the franchise being higher in general at the time, the backlash regarding Other M and later Federation Force making Fusion look better in retrospect, or people who grew up on the game gaining access to the internet, adding an influx of positivity to the conversations surrounding it. Regardless of the perception at large, Metroid Fusion did take a less open and more overt narrative approach than its predecessors. In my previous video on Super Metroid, I discussed the formula by which that game handles tension and release, usually making you feel alone or powerless during your journey through Zebus, followed by some kind of encounter or change of environment. Fusion takes this formula to the extreme, at the cost of the game feeling much more linear and scripted as a result. Following the destruction of Planet Zebus, Samus was contracted by the Galactic Federation to assist Biologic Space Labs in an investigation of SR-388's ecosystem, considering Samus's experience with the planet's former inhabitants. During the investigation, Samus and the research team discover an unknown life form that promptly latches itself onto Samus's power suit. Unable to perceive the impending danger from this incident, the team carried on as normal. Back aboard her ship, Samus starts to seize up, rendering her unconscious and inadvertently sending her ship towards a nearby asteroid belt. Thankfully, the ship's emergency systems ejected Samus before impact, and the biologic team was able to recover the escape pod and transport Samus to Galactic Federation HQ for treatment. During this span of time, the unknown organism, now known as the X-Parasite, had continued its invasion of Samus's central nervous system, multiplying and spreading rapidly. Apparently, the organic components of Samus's power suit were too entangled with her own biology to simply remove the suit to cure her of the parasite. The medics were able to remove large portions of the suit, but Samus's chances of survival were slim to none. A vaccine made from Metroid DNA that the Federation was conveniently holding onto was administered promptly, which completely destroyed the X parasites within Samus's body. Funny how that works. Though it wasn't long before an explosion went off in the quarantine bay of the Biologic Space Labs research station, with Samus being the one to investigate, as per usual. On her approach to the station, Samus reflects on being under Federation supervision for the first time in a while, in the form of her rental ship's AI commanding officer, which happens to remind her of a former commanding officer she had during her time with the Federation, named Adam Malkovich. Metroid games prior to Fusion's release did have an element of linearity to them, at least based on what we can assume about developer intentions. For instance, in the original Metroid, even if it's possible to fight Kraid and Ridley in either order, you need to defeat both in order to access Turian to defeat Mother Brain and beat the game. In Metroid 2, you need to clear all the Metroids in the area to progress to the next, which is linear progression on a macro scale. However, there are no doubt Metroids within a given area that you can take out in any order, even if they all need to be cleared out before proceeding. In Super Metroid, you need to defeat Kraid, Vantoon, Dragon, and Ridley. As far as I can tell, this is the intended order, though there are a myriad of techniques used in Super Metroid speedruns that allow for these bosses to be eliminated out of order, so to speak. But even if you tackle them in the intended order, there are a number of useful upgrades along the way that you can either acquire early or avoid altogether. In Metroid Fusion, what Adam says goes. For a good portion of the game, Adam will say, go to this area and do this thing. So I would head to that area to do that thing, but Adam insists on stopping me again when I arrive to say, good, now that you're here, go do this thing. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, that's what I came here to do in the first place. I would guess the early game was designed like this partially due to it being a handheld game, meaning players are more likely to play in short bursts and potentially forget what the next objective was from their previous session. In any other Metroid game, this would be unnecessary because figuring out where to go and what to do next is an inherent part of those games. For Fusion, which is more overtly linear, 
I understand why the reminders were implemented. The problem is that even without these incessant reminders, you can voluntarily stop by a navigation room at any time to hear the objective again. This made me think the decision could have been made from a narrative standpoint as well. With Adam hounding you at any opportunity he can early on, it could make the sequences where Adam isn't available more impactful and isolating. And I think Metroid Fusion is successful at that to a degree, but after the initial uneasiness of your first playthrough, you'll likely start to see the cracks in the illusion of fear set up in this title. Not too far into the game, it's revealed that Samus's infected power suit has mutated into an ex-parasite copy of Samus herself. The SAX is by far one of, if not the most memorable part of Metroid Fusion. Your first playthrough, you have no idea when it might show up. You may even find yourself frantically searching for a good hiding spot before it can find you and prove which of you is the true imposter. Unfortunately, you'll come to find that all the encounters with the SAX are damn near scripted to the point of feeling uninteresting on repeat playthroughs. There's only one particular encounter I can think of that required more than one attempt on my most recent playthrough. And if you played the game, you probably know exactly what encounter I'm talking about. Aside from these very specific and finite encounters with the SAX, there is no way to stumble into it at any point in the game. Even when you pass through certain doors while being chased, it'll just not follow you into the next room. In addition to a moment near the end of the game when, supposedly, there are many of the plagued power suits roaming about, there is no chance of actually encountering one. Save the boss fight. All of this screams of missed opportunities to me, but I also don't know if it would have been possible to do anything much more complex on the Game Boy Advance in 2002. Despite these flaws, thankfully the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay in Metroid Fusion is pretty solid. It's largely traditional Metroid fare, with the exception of each of the areas you'll be going to branching off from the initial hub area you land in. The freedom of exploration does open up as you go, and there are even some parts where you aren't being pestered by Adam constantly and have to figure out where to go on your own. Now, this structure isn't particularly what I want out of a 2D Metroid game. I would prefer a large interconnected map, similar to Super or Zero Mission, but I think the individual areas of Fusion are well designed enough as separate locations to excuse the less interesting way you go from one to another. Samus is also much more agile than her previous outing, with a less floaty jump and the ability to grab ledges from the start. There aren't really any interesting new upgrades this time though, just a different system for how missile upgrades work. Fusion feels notably more combat focused than its predecessors. Samus seems to take more damage than usual, but it is balanced out by every enemy dropping X parasites that Samus can absorb to regain health and ammunition. The boss encounters on the other hand are hit or miss for me, some are clever in how you circumvent their abilities to take them down, but others boil down to manipulating the AI into doing the same pattern over and over until you can dish out enough damage to finally take them down. After scouring the BSL station for upgrades, taking down countless ex-parasite hosts along the way, and avoiding the SAX mostly unintentionally, a crisis emerges. Samus discovers a secret lab deep in the station that has been conducting research on Metroids. It doesn't take long for the SAX to stumble upon the lab containing its artificial predator and start blasting away. The lab is then ejected and self-destructs, destroying the last known Metroids. It's at this point when it's revealed that there are multiple SAXs aboard the station. So through a few conversations with Adam that are actually interesting, Samus and Adam eventually decide to defy Federation orders and send the BSL station crashing into the planet it's orbiting, being the Metroid homeworld of SR388. But before Samus can do that, she has to take down an SAX guarding the control room. One mirror match and transformation later, the SAX blocking Samus's path is eliminated. With the self-destruct sequence active, Samus arrives at the landing site only to discover her ship is missing in place of an Omega Metroid. Unable to contend with the creature in her current state, Samus receives assistance from another SAX to take down their mutual adversary. Not out of kindness, more like out of instinct. Once the Omega Metroid is defeated, Samus' ship comes around in the nick of time thanks to some animals that were stowed away on Samus' ship earlier in the game, repaying the debt of Samus saving them back on planet Zebus. Overall, I do think Metroid Fusion is a solid game despite its shortcomings, and I do enjoy playing it even if it's pretty dialogue heavy for a Metroidvania, making me feel less compelled to revisit it compared to Zero Mission and Super Metroid in particular. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next video.